My name is Johnny Pavlock. This is my video presentation for uh, fluids, video presentation two. All right, so for this, we are, we have a water pump. I'm gonna just read out the question. Water is pumped from a large tank shown in the diagram, which I'm gonna draw the entrance to the pipe section is sharp edged. The pipe is cast iron with a total length of two meters. Flow within the pipe is observed to be fully turbulent. The relationship between volumetric flow rate and the actual head rise is provided. <clears throat> so if I draw this out, we have our tank, which is open to the atmosphere. We've got our pipe, which has a pump, and then continues out. Um, and then that opens to the atmosphere. Um, this is our pump right here. We're told that this is two meters. Sorry, it's not really the scale, but that's okay. We're told the height is six meters. Um, we know this pipe is cast iron, um, which comes into play for our head losses. And then we know that these are sharp edges. Also comes into play for head losses. Um, and then it says we're given this, which is a plot of the head pressure, or the pump, sorry, head, the head from the pump, which is equal to 20 minus 2,000 times Q squared. That's the slope of this line. There's a few other numbers, but they don't really come into play for us. This is this saying head pump by Q. So uh, the question asks us, part A, we want to find Q, the volumetric flow rate. Part B, we're told that it's turbulent, but we want to um, basically prove turbulence, which we're going to do through our Reynolds number. And then part C, it says we're given an efficiency of 70%. Um, and we want to um, basically determine how much power the pump is supplied to give this flow rate. So determine power. <clears throat> um, so for this equation, or sorry, for this uh, problem, we're going to start with our energy balance equation. Pick two spots. They're pretty pretty obvious in this one. One at each one at each edge. Um, so we got our two spots. Uh, we said P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 plus the head of the pump um, <clears throat> is going to be equal to P2 squared plus V2 squared over 2G. I'm sorry, that's gamma, not 2G. <clears throat> plus Z2. Uh, and this is where our losses come into play. So this takes into account both our major and a minor. We'll break it down in a second. But first, we're able to simplify this quite a bit. One and two are both open to the atmosphere. So those go away. Uh, at point one, we're in a large tank. So velocity is neg negligible. We got our height is six meters. So V1 is equal to six meters. This one, height for Z2 is zero. We are given... Uh, head pressure in terms of Q, which we're actually trying to find, and it will come uh, in handy earlier. I also forgot to mention, we're given a diameter for this of 0 0.07 meters. <clears throat> um, so we know the HP is equal to 20 minus 2000 Q squared. Um, using this, we know Q is equal to VA, um, and we know that A, is pi over four times 0 0.07 meters squared. So I'll just go ahead and type that out real quick. squared <clears throat> we don't know v2 squared but it is the only v so we can just kind of 
forget the two subscript. <clears throat> we know G is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, that comes into play a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it as G for now. And we know our head losses is actually broken down into head losses minor plus our head losses major. For this, you can break that down saying head loss is major. Yeah, we know our equation for that is our friction factor times our length over our diameter <coughs> um, times uh, <coughs> our velocity squared over 2g. This is where that 2g comes into play, so I kind of left it for that. We know our length is 2 meters. We know our diameter is 0 0.07 meters. The only thing we don't know for our major is our friction factor. However, our friction factor, we usually get that off the Moody diagram. And the Moody diagram is based off of Reynolds number, which we don't know. Um, but we are told it's fully turbulent, so we can uh, work off of that. And then it's also based off our roughness factor of our diameter. So um, we are told, we're not told. If we look it up in our book, um, we look at cast iron, we're told it's made of cast iron. The roughness is 0.26 millimeters. So knowing roughness is equal to 0.26 millimeters, which is equal to 2.6 times 10 to the negative four meters. And I said the Moody diagram works off of roughness and it also works off diameter. So divided by D, divided by 0 0.07, divided by 0 0.07 meters, we get six. Zero zero three seven one four. And when we look at the Moody diagram, slide this back up. Um, you can see that this edge over here, this is what we work off of. Um, and when you get past this line, it's called the holy turbulent flow. You can see that it evens out. So since we know it's turbulent, we can basically just follow this all the way over we find our about 0 0.037 um it's not an exact but close enough and we follow it over we can actually get our friction factor we can determine it to, to determine it to be about 0 0.027 so we can just assume that for now and then we'll prove it later after we've solved this so we know from this f is equal to 0 0.027 so if we rewrite everything <clears throat> we get uh 0 0.027 times 2 meters over 0 0.07 meters. Meters cancels out. And then we still have our V squared over 2G. And that is our head loss major. For our head loss minor, we know it's equal to the sum of our K values times V squared over 2G. We only have one K value in this case, and we're given that via our sharp edges. For sharp edges, if you look it up, K is equal to 0 0.5. So um, our total head loss is major plus minor, which equals 0 0.027 times two over 0 0.07 times V squared over two G plus 0 0.5 times v squared over 2g, which can actually give us <clears throat> 0 0.027 times 2 over 0 0.07 plus 0 0.5 times v squared over 2g. Um, so now that we have kind of all those, we're going to go back to what's left of our um, energy balance equation. We can kind of plug everything in and see where we're at from there. So we have 
on the left side we had that Z1, which is six meters. We had our <clears throat> head pressure, which we were given via the graph is equal to 20 minus 2,000 times Q squared. Um, we actually can break that down a little bit too. We know Q squared, but I'll do that in the next step. We know that that's all equal to V squared over 2G plus our head losses, which we found right here. So plus 0 0.027 times two over 0 0.07 plus 0 0.5 times V squared over 2G. Boom, we get that all comes up again, which is nice. We can actually simplify it again. Um, we can combine these like terms uh, Q is a product of V and A. We know A, so it'll just leave us with uh, with V, which is kind of nice. Um, so simplify it one more time. Negative 2,000 Q, like I said, is a product of V and A. We know A that I found up here is 0 0.00385 meters squared times V. Um, We'll move those over is equal to 0 0.027 times 2 over 0 0.07 plus 0 0.5 plus the 1 from this one times v squared over 2g. <clears throat> and then we have our 26 from this side, minus 26. On to the next page. <clears throat> So with all that, we're basically just trying to solve for V. Um, so by solve for a few of those, we can say the left side has is negative 0 0.0296 v squared solve for that right side um get 2.27 times v squared over 2g we can finally plug the 2g in um with G being 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so that would leave us with negative 0 0.0296 V squared is equal to 1159 V squared minus 26. If we solve for that, solving for V, V can equal 13.37 meters per second or negative, but we know velocity can't be negative. So I'm gonna leave that out. So we have our V, <coughs> we know Q is equal to V times A, <coughs> which should give us 13.37 meters per second. Our A from earlier is 0 0.00385 meters squared should give us a Q of 0 0.051 meters cubed per second. So that's part A. Part B, um, we're proving turbulence. So for our turbulence, we know the Reynolds number has to be greater than 2300 and that's turbulent flow. Reynolds number is equal to rho velocity 
amphiometer over mu. In this case, we know water's going through, so that's 998 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, we know our velocity we just found, 13.37 meters per second. We know our diameter, 0 0.07 meters. And if we look up mu in our book, we find mu is 1.12 times 10 to the negative three newton seconds per meter squared. If we solve for that, we get 833.954. So that's way above our 20, 2300. So we've definitely confirmed that it is turbulent flow after all. Sorry, just can't see that. Definitely confirmed it is turbulent flow. Now, our last part, part C, asks for our power. Um, we know our power is just our work over our efficiency. We know work is gamma Q times the head of the pump. And we are given our efficiency as 70% or 0.7. So we can say, looking up gamma for water, 9.8 kilonewton meters cubed. Um, Q, we found up here, 0 0.051 meters cubed per second. And then for our H of the pump, we know it's equal to 20 minus 2,000 Q squared. So 0 0.051 meters cubed per second squared. All of that over 0.7. We say. We'd find that the power required is, goodness, I'm sorry about that, uh, gamma Q H pump 9.8, uh, the power required is 10.565 kilowatts. And that is our equation. Our, our final answer. Uh, let me stop. All right. Thank you. Have a good uh, next semester, Professor.